Welcome, and thanks for checking out this SunPower Pro Tip on CT installation for consumption monitoring. Consumption monitoring is a great new feature included with your SunPower Equinox monitoring hardware that can give homeowners a better understanding of how the solar power system is operating and stay engaged with you and SunPower. Today, we're going to provide you with some helpful tips to ensure the CTs are installed properly. You'll likely find that with some careful planning and a good understanding of how it works, consumption monitoring can be easy. We're here at SunPower's training lab in Richmond, California, where we have installed a SunPower Equinox system. The EnergyLink hardware, also known as the PV Supervisor 5X or PVS 5X, includes a consumption meter. Enabling consumption monitoring for the homeowner requires the installation of CTs. CTs measure the amount of current used in the home. The meter also measures voltage, and this allows us to calculate the power and energy used by the home. To configure the system properly, we will need to ensure the CTs are installed correctly. First, we're going to identify a location where the CTs can be installed and measure total household current. This is the most important and sometimes the most challenging part, but I think you'll find it's pretty straightforward in most cases. Next, we'll mark the CTs to keep track of which phases they are on. We'll then route the CT leads and extend them if necessary. After that, we'll land the CT leads in the PV Supervisor 5X, paying careful attention to the phases. Lastly, we'll install the CTs themselves. And once we've completed these steps, we are done with the installation and we can wait for the commissioning to finish the process. We'll begin by identifying a location where the CTs can be installed. And at this point, it's probably helpful to remember how a CT works. CTs work by measuring the current being consumed by the household, so they can be installed in any location where they're going to be able to measure all of the household current. Oftentimes, the easiest location will be the service entrance conductors, typically at the top or at the bottom of a service panel. Occasionally, instead of service entrance conductors, you may have a bus bar on the supply side of the main breaker in the panel. If you can't go on the line side of the main breaker, Quite frequently, you can install on the load side of the main breaker, such as on the bus bars between the main breaker and the load breakers. Or if you have a main breaker enclosure and a separate subpanel, you can install the CTs on the feeders between the breaker and the subpanel. In some cases, however, you might find that it's impossible to install the CTs on the service entrance conductors. And in those cases, oftentimes the best solution will be to install the CTs on the individual load conductors inside the service panel. This might be a little bit more complicated because you have to ensure that you carefully phase um, all of the individual load conductors as well as your CTs, but it can be a great solution uh, for those cases where you don't have access to um, uh, the service entrance conductors, bus bars, or feeders. Once we know where the CTs are going to be installed, we can mark the CTs, route the leads from the distribution panel back to the PP supervisor, and then we can install the CTs. But before we do that, we may need to take a moment to do some electrical testing. And before we begin working inside the panel, we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. So before we begin the installation of our CTs, we'll wanna prepare them for the installation. So we'll pull the CTs out of the PV supervisor box. And before we actually install them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few moments to go ahead and carefully mark them. So as soon as you pull it out of the bag, I recommend that you put a piece of red tape on the CT itself and then a piece of red tape on the CT leads. Now we're ready to um, rough this in to the raceway. With our CTs roughed in, we're going to take a couple minutes to make sure we understand the phases of all of our loads and um, our PV supervisor breaker. We're going to begin by making sure that we understand which phase the service entrance conductors are on. These ones are already marked with phase A and B. We'll take a second to make sure we understand how the main breaker is constructed. And then we'll take a couple moments to look at our panel board construction and also use our electrical meter to make sure that we know which conductors are on which phases on the load side of the panel. So we'll begin by using the meter. In this case, we can visually verify that this bus bar is constructed so that it alternates between phases. You might assume that it goes phase A, B, A, B, but we can go ahead and use our meter to test this. If the panel is de-energized, you can use your meter to test continuity. In this case, however, 
the panel is energized, and so we're going to use our meter to test voltage to uh, determine if the conductors are on the same phase. So I'm going to turn my meter to AC volts. And then what I'm going to do is physically measure across the breaker to determine if they're on the same phase or not. We verified that this is the A phase and this is the B phase, and we've also looked at this panel board construction so I can see it goes A, B, A, B, A, B, or line one, line two, line one, line two, etc. Right? So now if I'm preparing my load conductors for CT installation, it's important I take a few moments to go ahead and just visually um, identify which conductors are on which phases. So this is an L1 conductor, this is an L1 conductor, this will be an L1 conductor. Again, just following the paddle of the panel board. Now that my CT leads are marked, I can go ahead and route all of my CT leads together to the PV supervisor. This would be a good time to go ahead and bundle up your revenue grade CT leads along with your consumption CT leads so that you can route them all through the same raceway. If you need to extend your CT leads, use a twisted pair conductor. In this case, we're using CAT5 to extend our leads. And what I've chosen to do is to use orange and orange white to extend my L2 and blue and blue white to extend my L1. We recommend using insulation displacement connectors, very simple, low cost, and reliable connections. To install these properly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start with, again, our L2 conductors. To install these on an insulation displacement connector, or an IDC. We do need to trim back the insulation just a couple of inches so that it will slip neatly into the connector. We don't need to trim back the CAT5. Now I'm gonna use the solid blue wire for, to go with my black, and I'll use the blue-white wire to go with my white leads. I like to go ahead and twist the leads nice and tightly so that when I insert them into the IDC, none of the individual strands will get pushed back. Now we'll go ahead and insert the conductors into the IDC one at a time, pushing them in until they're all the way in, fully seated. And if I look at the back side, I can also just visually verify that the conductor has gone far enough back into the IDC. I'll install my second conductor. And then I'll go ahead and insert the lead from the CAT5. Once I verify that all my conductors are fully seated, I can go ahead and crimp down on it with my pliers. Typically you'll hear an audible click or a snap when it's fully seated in place. So now that I've installed my connector, I'm going to give a quick tug on each one of the conductors to verify that it's been crimped properly in place. Now I've completed the connection um, to not only extend my CT leads, but also complete the parallel connection between my installed parallel CTs installed in my service panel. So now we've brought our power and our CTs into the PV supervisor. Uh, it's time to go ahead and route them through the supervisor and land them on the appropriate terminals. We always want to make sure that all of our relatively high voltage conductors, and uh, that includes both my power supply as well as my CT leads, pass through the studs on the same side as the raceway that we're on. We don't want to get in a habit of crossing over because we want to make the best use of the voltage, uh, uh, high voltage partition. We're going to want to go ahead and route our conductors up and into the appropriate terminals. With my power supply conductors landed, I can go ahead and land my CTs on the appropriate leads. Right now, I'm glad I went ahead and marked my CTs before I pulled them through the raceway because I now know that this is going to be my L2 CT because it's clearly marked with red, meaning this one will be my L1 CT. Untwist it a few times and then go ahead and strip back the conductors to prepare them to land on the appropriate terminals inside the PV supervisor. The terminals are clearly marked. My consumption L1 CT is marked, and it's also marked with a B and a W, referring to the black and the white conductors on my L1 CT leads. It's also very clearly marked on the label um, at the back.
Now I'll go ahead and repeat the process for my L2 CT. With all of my CT leads and power supply conductors installed, it's time to take a moment to check my work and tidy up my wiring before I close it up. With all of our connections complete inside the PV supervisor, we can move over to our service panel to complete our CT connections. With my CTs clearly labeled, roughed in through the raceway, marked, and my service entrance conductors marked, now it's time for me to go ahead and install my CTs on the service entrance conductors. Because the service entrance conductors are always energized from the utility, you have to make sure that you're using the appropriate PPE. At a minimum, you're gonna be using a hard hat, safety glasses, and electrically insulating gloves. To install the CT on the service entrance conductor, you're gonna open it up. And you're going to want to make sure that the label that says this side towards source faces the utility. Route the CT around the service entrance conductors and then close it until you hear it click. And then you can manage your excess CT wire down through the side of the panel. Now we can go ahead and repeat that step for the L1 service entrance conductor. Open the CT, wrap it around the CT, ensuring that the label faces the source, close it up until you hear it click, and then you, again, you can route the excess CT wire down the side of your service panel. Now our CTs are installed. You can go ahead and start with your L2 CT, which should be clearly marked with the red tape, or you can begin with your L1 CT, doesn't really matter which. What's really critical with this step is that the label that says this tied towards source faces the utility. Now again, if we remember how these CTs work, they're gonna measure the actual household consumption. So if current is coming from the house, or I'm sorry, from the utility to the house, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that this label faces the utility. So when I find my L2 conductors, I'm gonna go ahead and route the CT around the bundle and again, I'm gonna make sure that the label faces the utility. And then I'm gonna close it until I hear it snap and click closed. I'll go ahead and then repeat this step for the other phase. In this case, we'll go ahead and put it on the L1 conductors. Make sure that the label faces the utility. You open the CT, wrap it around the conductors. Make sure that the label faces the utility and then close the CT until you hear it click. Because we have uh, load conductors for the house exiting in multiple locations, we installed parallel CTs. So now I need to go ahead and repeat that step for the load conductors on the other side of the service panel. Before we move on to the commissioning process, we're gonna take a moment to check our work. Again, visually verify that the phases inside the service panel make sense. Make sure that the CT label that says this side towards source is actually facing the utility. With these checks complete, we can move on to commissioning. I hope you found that with a little planning, you can easily install CTs for consumption monitoring in the vast majority of homes. Most of the work is in finding the right location for the CTs, where you can measure all of the household current. Often, it'll be easy, such as when you can install the CTs on service entrance conductors, bus bars, or feeders. If it won't work there, bundling load conductors in one or more locations is often the simplest, lowest cost solution. For more tips and training on consumption monitoring, check out wattnode.com and look for additional resources and training opportunities from SunPower. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.